We have an exclusive update on Arthur Jr.'s shoot incident at an indie event over the weekend. Plus, an ex-WWE star has signed a second AEW contract and scrapped Bobby Lashley AEW debut plans have been revealed. It's all in the Cultaholic Wrestling News right now. So a clip circulated over the weekend from an outlaw wrestling event which saw Arthur Jr. really taking it to... Yeah, a young a young indie wrestler like smacked him across the face, like really put some boots in, really hit him with some strikes, and then and then shouted at him on the mic after a very very short, very uncomfortable match. Well, what you don't understand, Tom, is that young wrestler was cosplaying as a guy from Samoa, whereas him and his bloodline is actually from Samoa, and it's wrestling where you can't pretend to be something that you're not ever. Right. So if you dare you. do that, you're in for a hiding. Ah, That's well, that now <laughs> explains it. Uh, yeah, so this this clip did the rounds and it went viral everywhere. Uh, Post match, Arthur Junior, as as Ross said, there uh, kicked off on the mic saying, "This is not cosplay. You had s- some bad advice from some bad effing trainers because I don't play wrestling. I bled for this SH1T. My family bled for this SH1T for generations. I'm not going to let some Puerto Rican SH1T put a skirt on and pretend he's Samoan. Now acknowledge me, the real effing bloodline." Um, from that, we had uh, a contact from somebody close to Outlaw Wrestling who was asked to remain anonymous, uh, who gave us a few exclusive details on what happened there. Because some people are, first of all, asking, is this some sort of convoluted storyline or did Arthur Jr. really just go off on a young wrestler? So, yeah, this unnamed source close to the situation confirms it was a shoot and they also added, I can tell you the wrestler did have a swollen lip slash face overall and a large bruise on his rib slash stomach area as he would do because you hear that kick. It was like a gunshot going off when it made contact. Uh, also, the wrestler is 18 years old, the source makes clear. Yeah, uh, swollen lip and face and a large bruise on the ribs and stomach from that uh, attack from Arthur Jr. in the ring. Of course, when we know more about it, we'll let you know more at cultaholic.com. Brian Danielson retired from AEW full-time in-ring action in really uh, divisive style, let's put it that way. A very glib ending to to Wrestle Dream on Saturday, but by design. Yeah, whatever way you feel about it it made you feel something at very least which Mm. means it was an effective way to go I've seen mixed reviews. I've seen people saying that it was the worst ending of a pay-per-view in history. I've seen people saying it was the best ending to a pay-per-view in history. And like you say, it made you feel. Yes. The phrase I was told by Justin Lockwood of BBC Newcastle <laughs> fame and then of Heart fame when I started my my job and I moved up here, I always remember, he said, it's always better to be someone's shot of whiskey than everyone's cup of tea. Mm. And this was a real shot of whiskey end to the pay-per-view. It was, yeah. Vegan whiskey. Vegan whiskey. Uh, five or so later, Given some details on uh, the last few months of Brian Danielson's AEW run. Yeah, Fightful Selector saying Daniel has legitimately been without a talent contract for a number of months and we're told he does not have any additional contracts. He is effectively a free agent without any additional obligations. He's told many in interviews and backstage that he doesn't envision going back to WWE at this time. The hope within AEW is that he'll wrestle periodically for them and resume additional duties whenever he's ready. Danielson told Fightful he has to get his neck fixed first, which me. Uh, likely means surgery which has been said in the press hasn't he before the end of the year he needs to go under the knife a lot of people were, were bringing that up and he was saying were they, was he saying that in interviews to to kind of throw a red herring in when it comes to the AEW match he's like no he legit does need surgery he has been struggling on um, Five Laws has a few other details about those final few months as an in-ring competitor full time the blood and guts match as highlighted by Fightful was one that AEW doctors legitimately didn't want Brian Danielson to do uh, he was cleared to do regular matches and tag matches matches throughout his full time ahead of his full time retirement though uh, and then when it comes to all in it seems as if according to Fightful Select uh, this was always going to be the place where not only Brian Danielson got his feel good retirement moment but also the place where Swerve's reign was always going to end yeah whether they wanted to or not this is what the report says Danielson's match at AEW All In had been planned since early this year uh, complete with Danielson winning the title we're told that Chris Hero produced the All In main event and Swerve Strickland was adamant he wanted to tap out to lose to Danielson as opposed to Pat 
passing out or anything else. What a guy. What a First guy. First and foremost, no ego, doing what's best for the business. That's it. That's uh, it. Since virtually the start of Swerve's reign, it was known that Danielson was likely to be the one who ended it. Yeah, and they, so I felt like they were always going that way, even though we weren't quite sure what they were going to go with for the main event of All In. For a long time, I think we all thought Osprey would be in the main event against Swerve, and it would be a feel-good moment with Osprey winning the world title. That was something that Osprey uh, very much put the kibosh on, saying, look, I've got years and years to make moments like this. A guy like Brian Danielson, who's in the, the twilight now, uh, he's not got many. So, it, so, And the more you look at it, the last few months of Brian Danielson's run, I think you and I have, have sat here and said this, it did feel like he was sort of speed running the dream matches, didn't it? Yeah, and the, I guess the thing to remember is like it's a, it's, a, it's a retirement from a full-time schedule, a full-time AEW schedule, mm-hmm. so he is going to come back. It just depends when he's ready. Because I reckon a surgery on the neck, this might be a little bit of a, a, a like stretching a bit too far. I reckon that's quite severe. Yeah, <laughs> Dr. Ross Tweddle says that uh, in, uh, surgery on the neck might be quite severe. <laughs> You heard it here first and nowhere else. Uh, now, when it comes to Swerve, there was one person in the mix uh, to potentially be at loggerheads with him at Wrestle Dream, and that was Bobby Lashley. Now, before we get into that, I want to touch on somebody uh, that has signed a second AEW contract with AEW. Oh, who do you want to stroke, Tom? I'll tell you. You want to stroke Leo Rush? <laughs> so you want to touch upon somebody there, Tom? Yeah. Give Leo Rush a little, yeah, I'm, I'm a little, little strokey, stroke. strokey. So there was. Uh, so this was revealed in an AEW exclusive on their socials that uh, Leo Rush uh, has indeed signed a new deal with AEW. He left his previous deal in early 2022 and has been back since then and now he has signed officially again. Uh, when they had this video where they were revealing that Leo had signed and he was talking about how excited he was, he was interrupted by MVP and Shelton Benjamin looking for Tony Khan. Yes. He, won't be on the in- on the- he won't be on the interview set, will he? No. You silly gooses. I'm here with the grandchildren are told you no key <laughs> Just- say the catchphrase one more time please <laughs> he's there somewhere having a little cry about that but no um <laughs> So MVP interrupts Leo Rush, and Rush takes a great issue with this, great umbrage with this, Dolores umbrage with this, and MVP has asked Leo Rush if he's free on Wednesday. On Torresol, mm-hmm. as the French might say, because obviously Leo Rush has been involved with Top Flight uh, more re- over more recent times. And it's, not, it's been a really subdued role for Leo Rush because he's a really talented guy. We know this fantastic wrestler, charismatic guy. So to get him involved in whatever this new hurt business is going to be called going forward mm-hmm. is a very nice role for him to have. Well, who else has Leo Rush been involved with in his previous years as a wrestler on the main team. He used to love the juicy ass of one Bobby Lashley. Tom, <laughs> could you <laughs> recreate the pose that Bobby Lashley would do at the best of one Leo Rush on the news video, please? Yes, you're right. I could. Could you now, please do it now so everyone can remember oh, what Bobby used to do in the ring with Leo Rush? You're right. I can't I quite could. remember. I know you remember because you do it all the time upstairs. And but... <laughs> So, do the pose, Bobby. Everyone's favourite pose. That one. Oh. <laughs> and then he'd smack his cock Yeah, give it a little slap. We put a little sensor bar on that. In for a penny, in for a pound. I'm nearly a happily married Sorry man. for making you do that. You're not. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you would be more hey, keen wanna, this Monday morning. See it, it's too early for this. <laughs> for see a longer version of that, patreon.com slash cold. No, 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 we're not going to put it there. We're not going to put it there. We don't want to get kicked off Patreon as well as anything else. <laughs> now, so Leo Rush and Bobby, the juicy ass of Bobby, <laughs> has, uh, a, they were a thing in Dub Dub E at that time. And uh, I wonder whether this is how we bring Bobby in. With Leo. No, 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 no. <laughs> Mowing through Leo. <laughs> because of the past they have Because together, of the yeah. past they have with his juicy ass. So there was speculation that Bobby Lashley might turn up at Wrestle Dream, featuring a segment with Swerve Strickland, Prince Nana and MVP. Didn't end up happening, and Fightful say uh, there was, however, something on the cards for that to happen. Yeah, they're saying Lashley was considered for the Wrestle Dream Spot 2 debut, but it was decided against when we asked about Lashley not, Lashley not being on the show. We were told, concerned that his likely debut would have resulted in Swerve uh, being laid out or attacked. It's not likely the two hometown beatdowns would have been worked out well on the on the, on the the same show, oh, uh, bear with the way the, the, the show ended. As things stand, he's expected to appear in the coming weeks, obviously aligned with the Hurt Syndicate's MVP and Shelty B. Lashley has not been seen backstage in AEW as of yet and was not at Wrestle Dream. So I get that. They don't want to have two hometown heroes just get decimated in a really sad manner on the same pay-per-view. So let's spread it out over several. Yeah. So I, I wonder whether it's going to be Leah Rush who becomes the first victim of Bobby Lashley here. I feel like they're going to bring him in and 
do a. Th- I could see MVP going like, oh, I, I mentioned this. I thought they'd do this at Wrestle Dream. I think they'll do this on Dynamite, where MVP will go, hey, I know somebody who's brilliant, who has defied expectation, who I think is going to be a brilliant fit for the Hurt Syndicate. He's saying this to Leo Rush in the mm. ring, and Leo's going to go, ha, no chance. And MVP's going to go, I wasn't talking about you. <laughs> I was talking about him. And here's Bobby Lashley to. Juicy ass at all, slot beer, Leo Rush out of his trousers. Yeah, that was the one thing missing from that segment on Wrestle Dream, though, because we were sat there watching it. It was nice to hear like the storyline development of Swiv, like officially turning down the Hurt Syndicate and going, Prince Nana, you are my family, come here. We we are we 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 family. But it, the longer it went on, you're going, it, Bobby's coming, isn't he? Bobby's coming, Bobby's coming. But it just didn't happen. It, it, the, the segment fell a bit flat just because it went for so long, teasing Bobby sort of being there, just because you read the internet and you see the rumors and whatnot, but it never happened. So I guess we'll get there eventually. Eventually, because it is weird. Tony Khan rarely spe- spaces things out, but he has here, and it's a good thing to see. Imagine such a thing. It's conflicting yeah. feelings, isn't it? Because the segment <laughs> did drag on a bit, but it's nice to get, get it spread out, yeah. I am very torn. I am very torn by it. We have a brand spanking new Patreon, uh, where you will soon find the new home of WTF moments from Crown Jewel onwards. All the WWE and all the AEW pay-per-views are getting the WTF treatment once again. Yes. And we can go wild, can't Yeah, we? uncensored, more stuff we can use for intros and stuff. We don't have to abide to the YouTube gods who are strict. Exactly. And Swerve Strickland. And punishments are back, baby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so for the big eight pay-per-views, the big four WWE, the big four AEW, we're doing punishments again, and of course, because they don't have to subscribe to the YouTube gods' whims and hopes and whatever, they can't be more brutal than they were before. Mm. And check that out at patreon.com slash coldholic. Thank you for supporting us on there, as you have been. And for the latest wrestling news at any time, you can check out coldholic.com. Stay safe. Oh, I'll do as well. Oh! Oh, The guy let rip! (laughs) I thought I'd give you one with socks. Love you, bye!